Farmers in their hero irrigation scheme are gearing up for boosted yields, motivated by the president's directive that directed that the country's trading cooperation to buy rice directly from the farmers. Now, the 660 million project has aimed, or rather, was aimed at reducing the post-production losses incurred by farmers <coughs> owing to the lack of market for the produce. The move, however, comes at a time when unpredictable weather patterns have destroyed rice fields, with a lack of fertilizers also threatening the actualization of the directive. Well, joining us now live from Kisumu is Laura Otieno. Laura, it's good to see you again this morning. So how prepared are the farmers for this? Well, uh, Trevor, not only farmers, but the entire stakeholders in uh, the rice production chain are gearing up for upscaling of rice production within the Ahero irrigation scheme. Where we are right now is one of the uh, farms. Actually, my legs are deeply submerged in uh, one of the rice farms. And as you can see behind me is an extensive area. And uh, there are a number of farmers that are actually on standby. The ones standing in various points of uh, my background are uh, farmers who are trying to chase buds which have been a perennial problem in terms of uh, eating or rather destroying uh, the rice farm, the rice uh, uh, plantation when uh, just before harvesting and uh, maybe uh, before we get into a lot of information I have the National Irrigation Board uh, Chair uh, Mr. Tanui. Welcome to Citizen TV and there was that directive by the President that uh, uh, the Kenya National Trading Corporation should be buying rice from uh, uh, from farmers to sell it to government parastatals. So how exactly are you preparing for that? Thank you. Uh, indeed, uh, the farmers in the Kano Plains received uh, the presidential directive with excitement mm -hmm. uh, because uh, traditionally they have been stuck with rice. Uh, we harvest more than 25,000 metric tons of rice uh, in this region and all this has been going in the hands of brokers at a very low price. So the farmers are exacted. First, they have a ready market now. Mm -hmm. So Kenya National Trading Corporation and us as National Irrigation Authority mm -hmm. are actually partnering to ensure that these farmers are able to supply uh, their rice through the formal chain. Now we have provided uh, drying facilities for the farmers. Mm -hmm. They are now able to bring all their rice to the uh, facility. They will mill their rice at the government facility here, Western Kenya Rice Mill, mm -hmm. and uh, Kenya National Trading Corporation will distribute uh, the rice uh, to government institutions, that is schools, prisons, hospitals, uh, defense forces, and any other government institution as per the presidential directive. Mm -hmm. So they're also excited in terms of pricing. Uh, traditionally, we have been paying the farmer at 35 shillings a kilo. Now you've heard uh, from the president that uh, the price of basmati has gone all the way to 85 Kenya shillings. Mm -hmm. So this means uh, the farmer has a very reliable market and uh, he's producing his crop uh, with the intention of selling the government within the shortest time possible. Mm -hmm. And to be very specific, in 120 days, the farmer can grow rice, uh, be able to harvest and paid immediately. Mm -hmm. So the farmers are excited. So this has an advantage because the farmer is able to go back into production. He doesn't need to have his rice in the store for months. Mm -hmm. He's able now to sell immediately and go back into production. Mm -hmm. So we are looking at a way of doubling uh, rice mm -hmm. production. If we have been producing 25,000 metric tons in the region, we want by next year under the presidential directive to move to uh, 50,000 metric tons of rice. Mm -hmm. In doing so, we are trying to bridge the deficit in terms of rice production and consumption mm -hmm. in Kenya. Mm -hmm. Currently, the rice uh, production stands at 120,000 metric tons overall in Kenya. Mm -hmm against a consumption of up to 600,000 metric tons. Mm -hmm. So that tells you we're still importing something close to 20 to 25 billion of rice every year. Mm -hmm. So it is a government effort, therefore, to bridge uh, this uh, serious deficit in terms of uh, rice production. Indeed. And uh, in terms of bridging the gap, we're also seeing that the consumption of rice in the country is growing at 12% annually. And initially, uh, when we were here last year, about sometime last year, you had talked about the expansion of the Ahero rice scheme. How far is that plan? Thank you. Uh, we have uh, put in place a robust mechanism in terms of expanding a heritage irrigation scheme. So we are this year alone, we are putting an additional 2,000 acres. That will translate to approximately 5,000 metric tons of additional rice production in the region. Mm -hmm. So we are targeting a heritage irrigation scheme. If we are able to expand 2,000 uh, acres every year for the next five years, mm -hmm. we are talking of now having this region have more than 20,000 acres mm -hmm. of rice. Mm -hmm. Currently, this region still stands at the highest potential in terms of expansion of irrigable area mm -hmm. uh, across the country. That is the Lake Victoria uh, Basin. Mm -hmm. So we as National Irrigation Authority, we have put in place already as we speak now more than 1,200 acres 
are already uh, completed. Uh, we have completed the infrastructure. Mm -hmm. So we are only remaining with 800 acres mm -hmm. to meet our target for this uh, financial year. Mm -hmm. So we want by June to have already the first batch of farmers mm -hmm. in those 2,000 acres go into rice production. Mm -hmm. Indeed, and maybe talking about uh, farmers being stuck with their, have, with their, with their produce that causes uh, post-production losses, there have been concerns about the uh, value addition. Uh, are you planning to perhaps engage the private sector in ensuring that the farmers, are, that there's a, a, a sustainable value addition chain that will be of benefit to the farmers in the long run? Thank you. Uh, value chain uh, development in this region, particularly in the rice uh, subsector in the country, has been a big challenge. Mm -hmm. It has been a disorganized uh, system. But now we have put in place mechanisms, particularly the rice uh, stakeholders. Mm -hmm. We have now co uh, formed what we call Kisumu Rice Stakeholders Forum, mm -hmm. where we want to address the issues from production all the way to marketing, mm -hmm. particularly at the Miller's stage. So we have put in place a mechanism to ensure that uh, we have private millers. Mm -hmm play a key role in terms of buying rice. If you recall the presidential directive, he says this fund is going to purchase excess rice, mm -hmm. meaning he has given room uh, for the private uh, players to also purchase rice from the farmers mm -hmm. at a competitive rate. Mm -hmm. He didn't close it to only the government. Mm -hmm. He said if it means the private players pay a good price to the farmer, mm -hmm. there is no problem, mm -hmm. so long as the farmer is not exploited. Mm -hmm. So we are put in place a mechanism for the private players to also join in the presidential directive and play a key role mm -hmm. in ensuring the farmer gets a ready and reliable market. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you very much. Uh, that is uh, Mr. Tanui representing the National Irrigation Board. But then uh, we are standing right now in a rice, uh, is it called a rice paddy? A rice paddy. Yes, it's called a rice paddy. So we are here in the rice paddy. We'll be following up the story very keenly, Trevor. As we had that conversation in the morning, we are looking at the overall revival of the agricultural sector uh, within the Nyanza region. And rice being quite uh, a backbone in that uh, conversation is uh, definitely something that we'll be following up on and bringing our viewers up to speed with the details in uh, concerning the presidential directive and how the rice market in general will be affected by that.